Africa University. I would want everybody outside, please come in and take a seat. It's very important. We're going to start any moment from now, please. Ushers, please make sure. We are honored you're here today to grace this occasion. We wouldn't take that for granted. Thank you very much for coming. We would also want to appreciate our professors here seated, the best in the Dallas University community, our friends, our well wishers. We appreciate you as we await the official commencement of this program. Thank you very much. Sound, camera, photography. Are we set? from subatomic particles to universal space, the testament of physicists. So she is going to be telling us the testament of a physicist to be delivered by no other person than Professor Mrs. Mabel Oyewen Ehigiato. Please get friends outside, please walk into the auditorium and take a seat. We will soon kickstart this event.
as we await the vice chancellor's procession please be reminded that once the procession comes into the auditorium we all should stand and remain standing thank you very much please be patient as we have a walk around on the opening formalities be patient we're trying to get everything right before we kick start this program
place i can see a lot of young people standing at the walkway behind please i don't want and remain standing as the vice chancellor's procession walks in just walked in please while we remain standing may we take the national anthem and after that the BIU anthem thank you
Let's appreciate the BIU choir led by Miss Rachel. Thank you very much, please. You can now sit. Appreciate you for coming. At this point, we want to commit. Please walk into the auditorium and take a seat. Thank you. Please sit, 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 sit. Okay, um, at this point, we want to commit today's occasion into the hands of God to do that for us. Uh, let me respectfully call on Professor Mark Osama Ihile, a professor of literature and the director of part-time program, part-time and sandwich program. So... I'd like to respectfully request that we please stand while the prayer is being said. Father, we thank you for a time like this. Thank you for great things that you are doing in Benson in Daosa University. Thank you especially for the 21st inaugural lecture of this great university. We are asking as an institution and we are committing the inaugural lecturer of today into your hands, O oh Lord, uh, asking for inspiration, for guidance, for utterance in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will empower your daughter and the outstanding professor of our time in such a way that this inaugural lecture will be the inaugural lecture to your glory and to the shame of the devil in Jesus much this name we have prayed. All right, thank you very much. At this point, I will respectfully hand the microphone over to the acting registrar of Benson Industrial University, Mrs. Asia May Ahe, to take up the proceedings from here. Good afternoon, everyone. We are welcome to this special occasion, which is a tradition in tertiary institutions, particularly universities. It's a unique occasion for us, and it's very important for our professors when they have the opportunities to give their inaugural lectures. We thank God for today for another opportunity for us to excel as a university. Before we continue our program, we shall introduce members of staff, particularly our principal officers and other members of management. Seated here with us is the vice chancellor, his representative, Professor Obu. Professor Obu, sir. Next to him, of course, we have the inaugural lecturer. You can see her poster all around the campus. Next, we have the ex-checker of the university. We call him the Bosa, Dr. Agag. We have the librarian, Mrs. Rosemary Duche. We have the provost of the College of Medical Sciences, Professor Iyawe. We have the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, Professor Ira Omorgwe. Next, we have him is Professor Obo, the Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences. Next to him, we have the Dean of the Faculty of Science, Professor Obayabon. 
Next to him, we have Professor Evunse, Associate Prof, the Professor Keda, Professor Evunse. Next, Faculty of Basic and Medical Sciences, which we now know as Basic and Aligned Sciences. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Professor Ajayi, the Dean of Faculty of Agriculture and Agricultural Technology. Next, we have the Dean of the Faculty of Law, Professor Igwe. Next, we have the Dean, the representative of the Dean of Faculty of Arts and Education. And <coughs> Mrs. Abiqui, Associate Prof, soon to be a professor. Next, we have the orator of the university, Professor Ehima Osama Igile, Professor Osama Igile. We have other principal officers and directors. We have the director of Seaways here. He's seated behind here. <laughs> GST. And other principal officers present here. You are all welcome. Some of us are not here, some of us are busy somewhere else. You are welcome in Jesus' name. In our presence, we have some eminent personalities, people were invited. We are all eminent, let us take note of that. All of us present here, we've left one thing or the other we are supposed to be doing, and we are here. That makes each and every one of us to be eminent. You are welcome, please. But we want to recognize some people. Here yeah, we have Professor Egiato. Please, if you are here, please just give us a wave of the hand. You are welcome, sir. You are doing the inaugural lecture by proxy. You are welcome. We have Dickiness Dibia. Is she here? Thank you, my welcome. Professor Ogene, are you here? Welcome, sir. Savio Ude, are you here? You are welcome, sir. Professor Orafona. Professor Orafona, you are here. And next to him, we have Professor Sani, he's seated there. We have Savio Akigbe, you are here, you are welcome, sir. Engineer Aoudou, Dikin Ema, Dikin Idu Osa Osawe. We have, I, I suppose I'm right to say, Mr. and Mrs. Aria Hesse. Am I correct? You are welcome. We have members of staff from the Faculty of Environmental Science, University of Benin. Dr. Uwodu, Department of Geometrics, Faculty of Environmental Science, University of Benin. Mm -hmm. Professor Palma, Department of fin Fine and Applied Arts, Faculty of Environmental Science, University of Benin. And we have Savio Chas, Department of Geometric mm -hmm. Geometrics. You are all welcome. We can see you have come here to support your own. Thank you very much. As the, pro as the pro programs continue, when we receive other names, we shall acknowledge accordingly. Thank you very much. At this point, I respectfully invite the Vice Chancellor of the University to please introduce the lecturer. Vice Chancellor, sir. Good afternoon, all. Biography of the author. I'll give you a brief account of the of the lecturer and uh, what she has and where she has been over the years. Professor Mrs. Babel Oyemosa Egato was born on the 6th of May, 1973, in Benicity to the royal family of Chief P.N. and Mrs. G.E. Aguabasimi. She obtained her West African school certificate from 
St. Maria Coretti Girls Grammar School, Unicity. As a student of that school, she was the best athlete and also one of the school prefects. She had a Bachelor of Science degree in Pure and Applied Physics in 1995 from the University of Benin, Edo State, where she graduated as the third physics female graduate produced by the university. <clears throat> While in the university at 100 level, she was the vice president of the National Association of Physics Students, NAPS, Unibank chapter, and the National Financial Secretary of the same society at 300 level. She later did her national youth service in the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC, Lagos. She was attached to NAPIMS, a subsidiary of NMPC in the Department of Frontier Exploration Services. On completion of her youth service, she obtained a postgraduate diploma in petroleum engineering from the University of Benin. She worked briefly as a petroleum engineer in Pan Ocean Oil Corporation in Lagos before obtaining her master's degree in physics with uh, specialization in geophysics in 2003. She was appointed as an assistant lecturer in Benson Daosa University in 2004 in the Department of Basic Sciences, physics, the physics uh, unit of that department. She started her doctor, she embarked on her doctoral research in physics in the area of geophysics at the University of Benin under the supervision of the late Professor Ife Dili, who supervised her for two years before he passed on. She then went to Ambrose Ali University at Boma, where she obtained her PhD in 2010. She became a full professor of physics in the area of geophysics in 2018, thus became the first female professor of physics in Edo State. She has 51 publications national and international learned journals to her credit. During the course of her academic career in Benson Dawsa University, she served in various capacities as head of physics unit, head of department, head of the basic sciences, Dean of the Faculty of Science, Vice Chancellor's Representative in faculties, in the faculties of agriculture, engineering, and presently Faculty of Basic Medical and Health Sciences. She has chaired many committees, both at the faculty and university levels. She is currently the Dean of Student Af Students Affairs, Bensi Dahosa University. <clears throat> she is a member of many professional bodies, such as the Nigerian Institute of Physics, NIP, 
the National Association of Petrochemical Explorationists, the Society of Petroleum Engineers, the Society of Exploration Geophysicists of the U.S. of the United States of America, the Nigerian Money and Geoscience Society, and finally, member American Geophysical Union. She has delivered lectures both at national and international level and has attended conferences and workshops built both in Nigeria and abroad. Professor Mrs. Mabel Ayemosa Ejato is a lover of sports and songs. She is happily married to Professor Engineer Sovio Aro Ejato, and they are blessed with three lovely boys and a beautiful daughter. Thank you. Okay. Please permit me now to invite the inaugural lecturer to deliver her lecture. Thank you, sir. the Hosa University, the Vice Chancellor, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, the Principal Officers here present, the Deans and Directors, Professors and colleagues, my Heads of Departments, my most respected students, great BIU students, my Lord Spiritual and Temporal, ladies and gentlemen and gentlemen of the press. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, today marks the beginning of a new era in the life of the female gender in Nedo State. In the sense that, in the sense that our own products, being the first professor of, female professor of physics in Nedo State, is standing before you to deliver the first ever inaugural lecture by a female physicist in the United States. There is this usual perception that the ladies in the United States are usually perceived not to be interested in education. But may I tell you something? The story has just changed. And I know that this is the last doing and it is marvelous in our sight. Vice Chancellor, I don't take it for granted to be seated for these eminent personalities here to present a lecture first of its kind titled Humanity is the Salt of the Physical Universe from Subatomic Particles to the Universal Space. 
I take it again, humanity is the sort of the physical universe from subatomic particles to the universal state. Matthew 5, 13 strictly says, we are the sort of the earth. As you are seated here, you alone can answer the question, if really you are the sort of the earth. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take a walk with me as I take you through my academic credo, credo of being an assistant lecturer since 2004 in Benson Hosa University to this present day in my life as a full-blown professor of physics specializing in geophysics. So let's go further. Before we go further, let us listen to some statements of truth in physics. Physics is essential but very complex. In physics, you do not have to go about looking for trouble. Nature does it for you. How do I mean? We remember one of our greatest philosophers ever recorded in the history of physics, Sir Isaac Newton. When he sat under an apple tree, an apple fell down and he kept on wondering, why did this apple fall downwards? Why not upwards or even sideways? At the end of the day, he perceived further or he tried to imagine, could that force that pulled this apple down still be the same force that is responsible for humans to stand vertically upwards? Then after that, he found out that so long as a body is within the Earth's gravitational field, the G is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. And that became a constant in physics. Now, let me ask you a question. Did Isaac Newton really go about looking for trouble? No, he didn't. He was sitting, maybe taking fresh air in his house. But nature did it for him. Apple fell down. And as a physicist, we keep on asking ourselves the why and how question that he did. And it came out with a constant that G is not about 9.8 meters per second squared. Physics is pleasurable. Honestly, when you're studying physics, it gives you pleasure because you're there to proffer a solution that the world needs. The whole world is governed by the laws of physics. Basically, there are three. And they were simply thought by no other person than Sir Isaac Newton. As we go further, we'll see those three laws. Physics is elegant. Fine as a human being, huh? You will see that I'm small. The truth of the matter is within me. I know I'm elegant. I know I'm big because of what is contained inside of me as a physicist. Physics is like love because they both need time and space. I believe all of us, we've been in love. One time or the other, or we are still in love. For you to be in love, you need time to be with your lover. And also, you need space to be isolated from others. Physics is like that. When you're studying physics, you need time to think. I could remember in my 100 level, we were about 46, and at the end of the day, just six of us graduated in physics. There are some courses in physics, you cannot find a single sentence in it. You can't lie down and study physics and say you're reading it. You have to sit down with your pen and paper and practice until those equations become part of you. Then it is deep that you have learned what you are supposed to learn. The physics is majorly concerned about energy. May I tell you that energy is physics, and physics is energy, and energy is what? Life. I believe we are all seated here because we have energy in us. If you don't have energy, you don't even find yourselves here. The physicist is precise and logical. For those of you that know me, if one plus one is two, I tell you the way it is. I go straight to the point and I tell you, this is how I feel about it. But I don't know how you feel about it. We don't beat about the bush because the time is not there. The physicist believes more in action and not in words. The same thing goes for the other explanation. Though physics is the father of all sciences, it is usually not seen but felt in every, in every aspect of life. My next point, we go to how physics became the first profession in the universe. In Genesis 1, verses 1 to 3, which strictly states, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form a void, and darkness was over 
the place. And God said, let the air be light. For those of you that physicists here, you know that there is a branch in physics which is light. That is optics. So light there, God created light. So in physics, branch discreetly with light. And light gives what? Energy. And energy gives light. And another thing is, God created heavens and the earth. In the branch of physics, we have geophysics, which is using physical parameters to study the earth. And geo means what? Earth. And I know that I have convinced you that physics is the first creation, is the first profession created by God himself. Though at times my husband will argue with me, no, it's survey. I'll tell you, no. Physics, I know, is the first create, uh, profession in the world. Physics is needed in our daily activities because it takes us out of every confusion state and at the end of the day, it throws light into it and it takes you out of the confusion state, empowering you and also you become transformed and become what? Emotional. Now, now let's go to the topic, which really says humanity is the salt of the physical universe from subatomic particles to the universal space. Do you know that we all, as we are here now, we have elements. Basically, there are three types of elements present in the human body. They are the carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen. And inside those elements, we have atoms. And inside the atoms, we have subatomic particles, basically protons, neutrons, and electrons. We all know the charges. Protons are positively charged. The electrons, they are negatively charged. Why the neutrons are neutral? Just like plus one, one, and minus one. And the universe we are talking about also contain elements that are made up of what? Subatomic particles. So let's try and compare what the humans have in them and also what is present in the universe. In the universe, we are consigned with space and time and their components. Such components are made up of total energy in diverse forms like radiation energy and matter. Then after that, these subatomic particles are responsible to build up the basic structures in the universe. And also human beings are made up of those basic structures which are called subatomic particles. This is, okay. That, that, that diagram there can be compared to what we have in the solar system. At the center, that's an example of a typical atom. In the middle of the atom, we have protons and neutrons, and they are referred to as the nucleons. Then the electrons are negatively charged, revolve around the nucleus. If you look at the solar system, we have the sun, which is permanently fixed, just like what the nucleus is. What I'm trying to do is I want to compare the subatomic particles, the typical atom now, and the solar system. In the solar system, we have the sun, which is fixed. And I don't think any scientist has ever come up to say the sun moves. It doesn't. The planets, the moons, and other uh, particles in the solar system, they revolve around the sun just like what the electrons do. Hope I'm not confusing anyone here. <laughs> A human body, please, this will amaze you. For a human body that weighs 174 pounds, which when converted gives us 80 kilograms, contains about 8.0 times 10 to the power 27 uh, atoms. We are talking of billions of atoms. Imagine 8.0 times 10 to the power 27. Despite how numerous these atoms are, we won't be surprised that the human being is still filled up with empty space to so the extent that when you are able to remove the empty space from the human body, you could compress the whole body of the human body to become the size of a cube of sugar. This is according to Freitas and Cross in 2007. Apart from these basic elements, we also have one. These basic elements constitute about 99% of the elements in the body. However, we have the trace elements, which contain only 1% out of the hundred, and these are zirconium, boron, and other trace elements. Hope we know what trace elements are. Yes. So scientists assume that 96% of the universe caters for dark matter and dark energy. We all know what matter is. Anything that has space and occupies space, 
What the dark matter does is to pull the galaxies apart. Why? It's to pull the galaxies together. I'm sorry. Why the dark energy pulls the galaxies apart? Now, let's quickly run through the Newton's laws of motion. The first one says, which is otherwise known as the law of inertia, that when a body continues to be at rest, it remains at rest. Or if the body is in motion, that body continues to be in motion unless an external force acts on it. This law is also referred to as the law of inertia. What is inertia? That tendency a body contains that keeps it in motion if it is in motion or make it remain at rest if it is at rest. The second one says, force is equal to mass times acceleration or the Y state that has change of momentum of a body is equal to what? The applied force, which is F is equal to MA. Then the third one says, action and reaction are equal and opposite. I will paraphrase that to me. Whatsoever you sow, you reap. That's it. During the course of my PhD thesis, I worked on formation evaluation. That was in 2010. I was supervised by Professor Efe Dili, after which I went to AAU to be supervised by another person than Professor Isaac Aguidion. That was in 2010. I worked on formation evaluation. What is formation evaluation? The art of you trying to ascertain what is in the subsurface. You assess it. It is when you have evaluated what is there that will determine if you will bring it on stream or not. Now look around. Is there anything around you you think did not come from the subsurface? No. Unless, let's say, about 80% of what we have comes from the subsurface. For example, the car you drive, the aircraft, the spoons you use in your home, even these fans that are working in the kitchen. If I, I don't know, everything, let's say 80% of what we use or what gives my comfort comes from the subsurface. Before I go, I would like to tell you that physics is all around you. The conductor in the street practices physics. When the driver runs out of where, he goes, he buys the fuel, then he lifts up the jerrycan without knowing that he's practicing physics. What he's trying to do is to lift up that jerrycan to increase the pressure in that jerrycan so that there can be flow of fluid from the jerrycan to the tank of the car. Because for there to be flow of fluid, there has to be from a place of higher what pressure to a place of lower pressure. Because we know the two formula for pressure, which says rho H, the pressure is equal to rho H or pressure is force over surface area. The woman in the kitchen practices physics. When you get home, the ladies, are there ladies in the house? When you get home, view yourself from the back of the spoon and also view yourself from the surface. At the end of the day, you find out that one is inverted and one is upright. That's just physics to start with. How can you imagine when you fill your bottle, you put it in the fridge, it gets burst? What has taken place is partial expansion. That's physics. Physics is everywhere. Physics is life. There is nowhere you cannot find physics. Now, before we go further to explain what formation is, this is an example of a formation. A formation is not a bed. A group of rocks with characteristic behavior that differentiate it from the adjacent set of rocks. Now, when you look at this diagram, we have six types of formation here. If you look at it critically, you find out that the, the, the pattern of the rock, the sixth layer now, is different from what we have in the fifth layer, the fourth layer, three, and so on and so forth. In Benin, according to lithostratigraphy, there are basically three types of formation. We have the Benin formation, we have the Abada formation, and the Akata formation. I will tell you that the Benin formation is the top of the three types of formation we have in, in Niger Delta. Why the Akata formation is the second? And that is really the seat of what? Hydrocarbons. But do you know that beneath formation, because it is made up of loose particles and it is the seat of fresh water, that is why Edo State has one of the purest forms of water in the whole of Nigeria. <laughs> then the third one is Akata formation. This is the deepest of the three formations. The only disadvantage in that formation is that it has over, a lot of overburdened pressures. That the owners of companies, oil companies, are afraid to go there and drill because. If they are not careful, if proper care is not taken, it might lead to a kick. And if kick is not controlled, it might lead to blow out. Before we go for that search, these three types of formation are under the Niger Delta Basin of Nigeria. Then, what is the Niger Delta Basin of Nigeria? We all know that if a Niger took his source from where Futa Jalon in Guinea, 
So you see, the river Niger are coming now. That depression on that river Niger. After that, it flows through Gulf of Guinea, then to the Atlantic, Atlantic Ocean. Those states that fall under that, they, or that place is referred to as the Niger Delta Basin. In Nigeria, there are basically nine states in the Niger Delta. Let me just mention a few. We have Edo Delta, we have Imo, we have Ondo, we have Cross River, we have Rivers, we have Aqua Ibo, and so on and so forth. The why formation evaluation? Why did I decide to go into formation evaluation? After my youth service in Naples, I found out that I love living the good life. That's the truth. I love the good life. I hate to suffer. I don't. That's the truth. For those of you that know me, you know I hate suffering. After doing my youth service in Naples, I saw how rich those people were. I told myself I can never be poor. <laughs> so. I went into formation evaluation. When you run your well, when you run your, when you drill your well, before you complete on the well, you carry out what is called formation evaluation, and that will help you determine if you are to complete on the wells. The same thing goes for water exploration. But before I go further, we have said the wealth of any nation, 80% of the wealth of any nation comes from the subsurface, and mineral is one of them. We have mineral. Another mineral, we have a lot of compounds in there, ilmenite, quartz, and all that. But take note, petroleum is not a mineral. I know people are surprised. Petroleum is not a mineral because mineral is really defined as inorganic substance that naturally comes from the subsurface. And petroleum is a hydrocarbon compound, and that makes it an organic compound. Though those in the social sciences could say that petroleum is mineral, Based on their knowledge, because you know they like money. Those in the social sciences could define mineral as anything that comes from the surface, a subsurface that can, you know, enhance financial what growth in a country. From their point of view, they could say petroleum is a mineral. But we, the scientists, that know what forms petroleum. We know that petroleum is not a mineral. Hope that is what we can take home for today, and I would love that. That is a typical uh, structure of the mineral. You see the work defined arrangements. Please note all crystals are solids, not all solids are crystals. Now we want to look at the different types of formation. We have the well log, the color, the mon log, the drill stem test, PVT, and all of that. For those of you that want to know further of the different types of formation evaluation, please, the books are there. Make sure you buy your copy. So many things I cannot say here that are there, we help you. This is an example of a typical well log. I'm a specialist in that field. I don't want to teach you how that is interpreted. This is an example of another well log. Uh, okay, now let me look at conventional petrol physical analysis. If you want to interpret your well, there are basic things you look for. You look for the porosity, you look for the permeability, you look for the water saturation, and you look for the hydrocarbon saturation. One important thing I need to say here is, once you have your, oil sat your water saturation, if the water saturation is expressed in percentage, then you now subtract what you had from 100%, and that automatically give you the oil saturation or the hydrocarbon saturation. You can see it there. 1 minus SW, that is if it is expressed in fraction. Let's assume you solve for water saturation using your Archie's equation after you have run your resistivity log you, and you have 0 0.76. Then you subtract 0 0.76 from 1 and that will give you what? 0 0.40. Now we'll go to drill stem test. We we'll have our core analysis. Time will not permit us. We we'll have the mug analysis. I'm going to skip through all this because time will not permit us. Let me quickly run to the reason for which we are here today, which is what Professor Mrs. Eidiato has done from her crazy stage of being an assistant lecturer to this present day. The first one, Vice Chancellor, sir, in 2004, which was my very first research carried out, then I was already employed. As an assistant lecturer here, 
I worked on net evaluation of crude oil production in the Niger Delta Basin of Nigeria. We found out that the porosity for San A was 34%, and while the porosity of San B was, uh, I think, 40%, and at the end of the day, we were able to find out that the well was a prolific well, prolific in the sense that it is commensurable. And after that, we went further to open hole formation evaluation. This was in 2006. Open hole formation evaluation of log interpretation of a reservoir. We found out that the water saturation there was 29%, and automatically the oil saturation becomes what? 71. We drained two wells there. Then after that, the Englishman would say, Charity begins at home. I decided to visit my father's land, which is Igeduma, because they had acute shortage of water. So I went there to determine the depth of the aquifer layer there. And at the end of the day, you know that this Jehovah Witnesses at Igeduma, what we found out was that you could strike water at 229.13 meters, and when you convert it to faith, that gives you 756.13 faith. Then we also compared, we also drilled another one because we drilled two wells there. The depth at which we struck water there was 241.48 meters. And we tried to correlate it what, with what was there, drilled by another person. And the other one was what, the well that was drilled by another person, the water well. They struck water at 206.1. And if you've been listening to me carefully, you've heard that they correlate. That's the difference between the depth at which we struck water at Tigeduma with what another person did was close. Which means the need for water correlation or where correlation is necessary when you are searching for water. In 2010, I presented a paper in Siberia. Then my husband was running his PhD then in Russia. I presented a paper in Siberia in a conference using modeling of oil water contacts that's using the material balance equation. This is a petroleum engineering aspect. What we do when you carry out your well log, it is good for you to uh, verify the values you have had to see if what you actually did is correct. When we mathematically use the material balance equation, we found out that there was great correlation. We recommended to the companies that instead of wasting so much money in carrying out distance tests, PVT tests, and so on and so forth. You could do it within the confines of your office, using your calculator, software, and all that. And that was quite cheap compared to these are the tables. If you look at it properly, you see the differences between which what we calculated and what was read. Then after that, we went to in 2011 a research on hydrocarbon investigation using petrochemical. Uh, pet, pet, Petrophysical parameters and core analysis using water feed. What we did there, we wanted to know why the recoverable oil in any reservoir drilled was low compared to the volume of oil in place. That is VOOIP. VOOIP means the value or the volume of oil in place. Then the recoverable oil. If you look at this, at the end of the day, we found out that despite the billions of crude oil we found that there or we calculated. Only like maybe one third was able to be brought to the surface, and that was great shortage. Because if you know the amount of dollars you use in drilling a well, nobody will want to drill a well and we don't want to break even. So we advise them that in drilling a uh, hydrocarbon reservoir well, you need to do or carry out proper well completion. For those of you in the oil industry, you know what well completion is. It's like you have built your house. Now it's time for you to give it the good. A painting that it needs, you are selfish, you don't want to do it well. Then another reason that could be responsible for the shortfall in the recoverable oil could be the drive mechanism. Depends on the type of drive mechanism. We have the gas driven, hydrocarbon, we have the water driven, and so on and so forth. Then we went further to another research in 2015. This was on formation evaluation, and we were able to find out that in Olobo. We, 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 we discovered that the wells there were made up of sandstone. We have three types of uh, reservoir rocks. We have the sandstone, the dolomite, and the sandstone. Then in 2007, we presented a paper in Miami, in Florida, in U.S., on a research known as geophysical and well correlation analysis 
of our feet. What we did, we tried to correlate three words, over one, over two, over three. At the end of the day, we found out that the three words actually correlated, which means instead of you wasting your money to carry out different types of formation evaluation methods, you could just correlate your well. The only thing is that there will be a, a slight difference in each of the wells. And at the end of the day, you could still drill a commensable well. These are the parameters we use for the well correlation. Time will not permit us, but when you have the book, you are able to do that. Vice Chancellor, I hope to embark on more researches in this area. Now that the country is being ravaged on the erosion. But let me quickly bring to your notice the work we carried out in Kaiji Dam on erosion control. In 2017, I carried out a research with Professor R. Ehigiato, Savio O.S. Oladesu, on the topic titled Determination of Volume and Direction of Flow of Kaiji Reservoir Using Hydrogeomatics Technique. And at the end of the day, we found out that you could really determine the direction of flow of any river. And if you're able to do that, which means this idea of people being, of, of communities being ravaged by erosion could be checked. And that we did. The only benefit of that was that we recommended to them that the governor or the government of any place should take it as point of duty to carry out good water storm projects. And before you carry out good water storm projects, there is something in survey we call topographical survey. When you carry out topographical survey, it's able to tell you the direction of flow of the water storm or erosion so that it will help you know where to channel the water to. At the end of the day, all these problems that we are having, that oh, so, 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 and so community has been ravaged with erosion, will not be there. In Asaba, we carried out a project there. It's one of the papers. Maybe time will not permit me. And that is why today, Asaba is embarking on water storm project. And we know that it will go a long way to really help them solve the problem of what? Erosion. There was a project they carried out in Benin, water storm project. My husband was telling me, this water storm project will fail. I asked him why. He said, because they did not do proper topographical survey. And that is why, if you look around, the water storm embarked on in Edo State, is it not failing? Yes, it is failing because we have erosion ravaging the whole place. By the time uh, Saba, Delta State is done with their own, especially in Asaba Metropolis, you will find out that that will not be the case. So if you want to embark on how to check erosion, please consult me. I'm available. No, I told you I love money. Vice Chancellor, sir. In 2018, I carried out a hydrogeophysical survey of groundwater deployment in Noka communities. Why did that do that? We this is our heritage campus. We have another campus at Legacy. Charity begins at home. If I'm a staff of BIU, I need to know what is happening within my school. So we decided to go to Oka community. We found out that the water table there is around 93.4 meters. I'm obviously telling you that if you want to drill a water well, that you want to sink a bubble there, around that Oka community, probably you are going to strike the water at 93.4. Did you observe something? Within the Benin metropolis, the depth at which you strike water is at shallow depth. But when you go to where they do not, you are having like 406 meters and so on and so forth. Another research was also carried out in 2018 on topic Hydrogeophysical Survey of Groundwater Development in the rural Nohoa Eho. My mom is from the home village or town because Eho is the headquarters of the local government area. So what we did, after working in my father's village, I decided to go to my mom's village, mother's village, and we found out that they would strike water at 138.6 meters. In 2018, I quoted a paper with a lot of so titled, okay, that I've discussed. Then I Another research we carried out was how to determine the mean low, low water in data. And the paper was titled, I presented this paper in a conference, titled um, Determination of Conversion Constant Between Lagos Datum and Niger Data Datum. At the end of the day, we were able to find out a constant of 17.79 and that was put into account to be able to make for the shortfall 
of the difference between the means, like normally in Nigeria, they use the Lagos data for the mean sea level. We all know what mean sea level is. But as you go to West data, the mean sea level changes. So from the experiment or research we carried out, we were able to determine the constant of 17.79. So when you are converting, you know what to do. Vice Chancellor, sir, I'm working on researches I have to do with land tremors. I'm done with the research I carried out. These are some of the researches I'm working on. I'm working on researches that have to do with land tremors, surface and subsurface deformations, road failures, erosional hazards, ravaging the country as well as the globe as a whole. This is being done using some geophysical, geomantics, mathematical and computer models, the subsurface and surface of the earth. Hence, they are very useful during construction. What am I trying to say? The geophysicists have equipment that can determine the presence of voids or fractures in the subsurface. How come you find some roads? Once the roads have been constructed, before you know it, the road will fail. I remember what happened in Oklahoma City in the US. The road kept failing and failing and failing until a geophysicist took it as a point of, uh, as a personal challenge that he must find out the reason for the failure. And at the end of the day, using the gravity method in exploration, he found out that. What was really responsible for the road failure was a large fracture and the void in the space. Then my research is also ongoing to determine the effect of sinking too many boreholes. Let me ask you a question. Don't you think that these numerous uh, boreholes we are sinking everywhere should have problems? They are already creating problems. Maybe by the time I'm through with my research, and if I'm given the opportunity, I'll come out and present a paper on that. Moreover, I'm currently carrying out researches on geothermal energy. What is geothermal energy? Energy from the earth. In the subsurface, we have what we call heat reservoirs. Then if it is water, hot water in the subsurface, we refer to it as a hydrothermal reservoir. And do you know this geothermal energy is about the safest, the cheapest, and the cleanest method for you to generate energy? The question then is, why is our government not doing anything about it? Everybody is just waiting on energy generated from water. I think the governor should consult some of us so that we can uh, advise him on what to do. <laughs> Conclusion. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, sir, this is my conclusion. Vice Chancellor, sir, from cradle of being an assistant lecturer to this present day, my researches have been geared towards how physicists have become the salt of the universe in the area of preserving lives, especially in provision of water in places where there was high level of acute shortage of water. Secondly, in the aspect of environmental prote protection in preventing erosion from ravaging our communities and also working on alternative means of viable energy generation in which the geothermal energy is included. This will help to reduce the use of other sources that could lead to ozone layer depletion. Hope we know what ozone layer depletion is. Because of all these methods we are using to generate energy, they now produce green gases like hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide, and carbon dioxide. They are eating up the oxygen. No ozone is like oxygen plus oxygen plus oxygen. And the oxygen has a cooling effect on humans. By the time you now produce all these green gases, they will now deplete, they eat up the ozone layer in the surface. Hence, the rays of the sun are hitting on you. I could remember what happened in River State. You know, after a damp of rain, everything, the rainfall became dark, dark water, sooty uh, water. I'm not an environmentalist. I am a night warrior. It is very sad that our modern industrial economy has taken mountains filled with trees, lakes, flowing streams, and converted it to pits filled with junk, slime, debris and all those terrible things. Thirdly, evaluating the subsurface for minerals and production for financial empowerment and for the benefit of mankind. In the aspect of subsurface deformation, using the gravity and electromagnetic geophysical prospecting methods, most importantly, empowering the girl child. That physics as a discipline is not only for the male gender alone. If I could do it, any other person can do it. If you go to our secondary school today, a lot of people are scared of going into physics. Even those of us we have a hundred of our times, you want to test the abilities of physics, ask them the simplest question in physics. They are not able to deliver. The problem, or my question now is, how do you think we can solve the problem? Because science is the bedrock of any nation. And the bedrock of any science course is what? 
physics. The engineer is an applied physicist. Tell me any discipline in the world that you don't have the application of physics in it. I don't think there's any. Now, these are my recommendations. It is possible for citizens of Nigeria to have access to portable water. Thousands of people can live without love, but no one lives without water. Water is the only drink for both the foolish and the wise. Water is the most neglected nutrient in our diet, but one of the most vital. Water is a basic necessity for both the rich and the poor. Therefore, the government should make it compulsory for every citizen of Nigeria to have access to portable water. This on the long run will help reduce the perforations in the subsurface and also reduce the consistent tremors experienced in some parts of Nigeria. Availability of portable water can also reduce the high level of health risk. Drilling of hydrocarbon reservoirs should be extended to the Akata Formation. And if we are able to have access to the weight of the nation in the subsurface, I think everybody, uh, Peter Obi is always talking about GDP, GDP, GDP. It will help to increase the GDP rate of Nigerians. One of the major causes of insecurity in Nigeria is due to inadequate power supply. One of the major concerns of physicists is what? Energy. The energy understands the concern, the physicist understands the concerns of energy more than any profession in the world. Therefore, my recommendation is the physicist should be vitally involved with issues that have to do with generation of energy in Nigeria. The geophysicists are professionally trained to send signals to the subsurface and detect anomalies in the surface, like voids, cavities, and so on. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, my distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My great VIA students, I dread take, I dread take a bold step to venture into physics years ago, and here I am, the girl child that lacked self confidence, the girl child that was timid and shy, touring higher, rendering consultancy services to individuals, students. Companies contributing to the well being of my country and delivering lectures both within and outside the country. May I end this lecture by saying, Do not feel lonely. The entire universe is inside of you. Stop acting so small because you are the universe in the ecstatic motion. This can be backed up by the book of Isaiah. Verses 4 and 5, which clearly states, Another day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his days among the people. Make them remember that his name is exalted. Praise the Lord in songs, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known throughout. Let this be known throughout the earth that the physicist is the sword of the universe. And also from the uni from subatomic particles to the universal space. Thank you and God bless you. Okay. I must appreciate the following persons here present. First and foremost is the president of this great institution for giving us an enabling environment, a relaxed environment, so that you can walk in. And also, the first lady, in fact, behind every successful man, there is a woman. So our first lady, Mrs. Laurie, that also is not left out, the vice chancellor, a smart administrator, a father of all. In fact, though he's not here, I know that spiritually he's here, I must appreciate him. The registrar, a smart administrator too, he is one of the pillars of EIU, the bossa. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We are where we are now. You know, BIU is growing because he handles the post and is handling it well. That's why BIU is soaring higher. Thank you, sir. Then my very good friend, Mrs. Obdachi. In fact, she's, she has PhD in library studies. Beautiful and amiable woman. I love you. To my things, they are seated at the second row. 
The kind of joy I receive anytime we go for management meeting, I can't explain it. I cannot mention this. As, he, as you're seeing all of them, the deeds and directors, they are my friends. Do you know how many times they have prayed for me? When I'm not happy, they are not happy. When I'm happy, they are happy. Then, my husband. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to praise him too much. Please listen, there's an adage in Benin. When something is good, you hide it from the eyes of people. He knows what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> you see, all these journeys I've made to US, Russia, many countries outside Nigeria. He's the one sponsoring me. Yes. Once I tell him, this is where I want to go, consider it done. Praise the Lord. He's such, in fact, I can soar higher because I have him behind me. He will tell me, keep going. Don't worry. All will be well. Some of you saw him when he came. He quickly came to work on this system. Some of you that were present early, they saw him. Then my siblings. I don't know. If you are looking for any family that is united, you look for them. They are giving me good support system. My head of department. You see the water you are drinking is branded, right? They made it for me. You see everything that is... I don't know how to thank them. My HOD is my HOD here, Professor Mrs. Soju. Is she here? Thank you, ma. In fact, I appreciate you for what you have done. Now, let me say something important about Professor F.O.J. Obo. Twice I have had accelerated promotion in BIU. I had them when it was my dean. So when they told me he wasn't going to act... For VC today, I said, God, you have done it. And I know that you will agree with me that this is not a letter, it's a success. Just because he is here. Thank you, sir. I'm forever grateful for what you have done. <laughs> then my brother from another woman, Mr. Sato, Professor Osato. I don't know how to thank you. He's been working night and day to make sure this thing comes out successfully. Members of staff in my department, I appreciate you all. Great BIU students. In fact, as dean of students, I'm number one student. And I know they love me. If they didn't, they won't be here. I love you, and I will continue to love you. Please, the inaugural lecture committee, I thank you. God bless you. The ceremonial committee, thank you. God bless you. Mrs. Okubo is not here. She worked tirelessly. I appreciate all of you. I was just looking at hefty men sweeping. Carrying things. I said, what? Do you think I deserve this? They said, Mama, if it's for you, we can do on it, anything. God bless you. Then to the invited guests. DBC, sir. You came all the way from my one campus. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Then, uh, solve your game. Please, sir. I appreciate you. Members of staff of environmental sciences department, uh, faculty, I appreciate you for supporting my husband to come down. Please, if I could not mention your name, I didn't mean any harm. I love you. If you know me, my love is contagious to people. I love you. God bless you and thanks for coming. Thank you very much, Mark. And we appreciate her. <laughs> Professor Mabele Higiato, let's appreciate her. Very well said. Thank you, Ma. You may have your seat. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, for the synopsis of the lecture. Uh, uh, go and sit. Well done. Very beautiful inaugural lecture. I'm sure we have learned a lot from it. Thank you. Crude oil is not a mineral. Thank you, thank you, Professor Mrs. Ejato. And thank you, Professor Mr. Ejato. <laughs> you see, they are showing an example, very powerful couple. You see, most, they, they publish together most of the time. And I think it's a good thing that they are in the same area of research. That's good. So, very, very fine inaugural lecture. 
the lecturer focused on how the physicist has become the salt of the earth by proffering solutions to society, societal challenges. And the salt has not lost its saltiness, so it will not be trampled on their foot. Thank you very much. We have taught us a lot of things we did not know, and you have reminded us of things we had forgotten since we last did physics in secondary school. Well done. As a research geophysicist, the inaugural lecturer has made it clear to us that in an area where there's acute shortage of water, this is very relevant to us. For example, in a do not, the geophysicist can detect the presence of aquifer layers for portable and commercial water production. Also, from her lecture, we have seen that a proper water storm control, the need for topographical survey, which helps to determine the direction of flow of the flood water is very important. So when we are doing uh, flood control uh, works, we should uh, hire a geophysicist in the team. As of now, I don't think that is what they do or we didn't have failure here and there. You can spend a lot of money, then the, the next training season will just mess up what you have done. In addition, mineral oil as well as petroleum can be better exploited if the necessary precautions are observed for the exploration of our subsurface resources. In the aspect of energy generation, the lecturer has revealed to us that an alternative means of viable renewable energy generation is the geothermal means. This is apt in view of our efforts over the years to uh, reduce the depletion of the ozone layer, which is a cause of global warming. So I wish to thank the lecturer again. What next? Uh, you decorate the numbers. Okay, so I invite her. Professor Mrs. Ejato, the newest senior professor, will now be decorated. Thank you very much. Thank you. And what are the like? The family plays, the immediate family, the husband, the kids, please step up to the podium for a snapshot, please. Immediate family, the husband, the kids, please come to the podium. After that, All former inaugural lecturers, please, you need to come up and join now.
inaugural all inaugural former inaugural lecturers here present please come to the podium all former inaugural lecturers here present please come to the podium and join her and the family for a snapshot Thank you. And step down. Thank you very much. Um, at this point, may I respectfully call on the acting registrar of Benson Idaho University to take up the proceedings from here. Registrar. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, once again for gracing this occasion. Congratulations, Ma, eminent professor. Thank you very much. There are some personalities who have come here to grace our occasion. I wish to acknowledge them. Mrs. Aizoje, you are welcome, Ma. Dr. Osai, you are welcome. Mrs. Enegboma, you are welcome. Professor Mrs. Ruth Ororide of our accounting department, you are welcome, ma. Professor Oviasu of political science department, you are welcome, sir. Our former registrar, Ms. Barrister Mrs. Ungo Keke, you are welcome, ma. Mr. Ehato, the director of educational services, you are welcome, sir. Professor Rosemary Obasi, our Director of Academic Planning, you are welcome, ma. Professor Oju, HOD Physical Sciences, you are welcome. Professor Osundu, you are welcome, sir. And all HODs seated here, you are welcome, sirs. Thank you very much. We are getting to the end of the ceremony, and I wish to welcome here Professor Ohiro Noya to please take the closing prayer. He gave the last inaugural lecture here. And continue. Please could you rise for the prayer, please. Let us pray. Father, thank you very much for the success of this inaugural lecture. We say be exalted in Jesus' name. Only you could have done this. That we had very beautiful weather. Everything was clement. We say thank you in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that as we go back, Lord, your presence will go with us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, thank you very much. Please, can we remain standing? We've now come to the closing formalities of this occasion. Please remain standing as we take the BIU anthem and after that the national anthem. And please, when the vice chancellor's procession leaves, okay, now the vice chancellor's recession, as they are leaving, we should also remain standing until they are out of the auditorium. BIU and the fruit of faith, the fame spread far and wide. We 
sweet hearts of joy, we sing of thee, stand firm in truth and honesty. Gold and white for excellence, academy we standing as the VC's recession meets the auditorium. coming for our friends, family and friends of Professor Mabel Ingato, the BIU community here present, we appreciate you. Thank you very much and may God bless you. 